Hi guys, good afternoon. Welcome back once again to The Edward. I'm your host, Eddie, and in today's video, I thought I would give you guys my thoughts and initial reaction and overall review for Lore Season 1, which debuted yesterday on Amazon Prime. The series officially debuted, and I just finished watching the whole thing. I just finished the last episode, which was phenomenal by the way and uh, I just wanted to give you guys my thoughts on it and uh, I how I hope that this show is going to be around uh, in the long run now before I go on and I keep blabbing off of course please be warned that this uh, video will be full of uh, big spoilers for season one of lore I'm covering episodes one through six all of them so if you're not caught up by this show or by some of the episodes but you've only seen a few you may not want to keep watching or listening as I will be discussing spoilers and big story details so you have been warned that being said uh, I loved it I absolutely loved it I was really really excited about this show and I think it absolutely delivered and uh, you know I think one of the reasons why I enjoyed it so much is because uh, just a week ago, my friends and I went to this attraction uh, here in L.A. called uh, Creep L.A. And it's the uh, best way I can describe it is like a, it's like a combination of a scare maze and like a theatrical performance. It's more amusing than scary, but it's definitely creepy. And it's definitely one that makes the hair stand up on the back of your neck because of how immersive and interactive the experience is. But this year, their theme was based off of this show, which just uh, debuted and I think going through that experience and just really really enjoying myself and being incredibly entertained got me uh, good and ready for this show and I was already excited for this show and uh, like I said I just finished watching it and I really really enjoyed it um, I didn't uh, the only thing I didn't really care for was the uh, story about well I mean it was sort of interesting but I feel like it didn't really answer the question which folk tale or which legend or story did it inspire and it was the one about the doctor who would uh, take a hammer and a spike go through the person's eyes and uh, you know uh, do a, a frontal lobotomy that way and as creepy as that was it didn't really answer the question which story did this inspire because I feel like the other episodes did a excellent job explaining the real life incidents or true stories that happened that were uh, you know, that were done that were like uh, brought to life for us and then explained and also intertwined the folklore that surrounded it but uh, unfortunately I don't think the doctor episode the brain doctor episode really did that one I did however immensely enjoy the story of the bunny man whether or not it's true it was the opening story to the opening scene of that episode so I enjoyed that very much I think my favorite would probably have to be the werewolf episode you know I love uh, werewolves in general uh, and uh, I especially enjoyed seeing how it was like their very it was like Europe's very first experience with a serial killer someone who's truly messed up in the mind and was acting more like an animal than a man and uh, I loved how they were he was using like the legend of the werewolf or the legend of the beast to cover his tracks to cover up his crimes until he was eventually caught and uh, rightfully punished of course you know and what this show also did it also made me realize that way, way back in the day, you can understand why people believed what they believed with the lack of knowledge, the lack of modern science or modern medicine at the time. All they had were stories and experiences and incidents that they could use to justify the existence of these things, these beliefs or these monsters they believed are were real. And every single episode was based off of a real life event. And um, even though we got some glimpses of some spooky, very spooky stuff, you know, and I, th I, I think all of it is fairly true based on the accounts that we saw in uh, this show. You know, it, it just really provided some remarkable perspective or insight. Like, it just goes to show you just 
how important it is to uh, not let your beliefs or your emotions get the better of you. And I think the prime example for this first season was the episode of the man who murdered his wife because he believed she was possessed by this demonic fairy that had taken over his wife's body and he thought it wasn't his wife and he wanted to get his wife back. So he douses her in gas and then sets her on fire because he doesn't think it's his wife. He thinks it's the demonic fairy. And that was just like, my God, you know, and he actually sincerely believed this. This was hundreds of years ago, back in like 19th century Ireland, and they actually believe this shit. I mean, we look back now and we're just shocked and astonished that people actually went through this stuff. But if you actually look at the time, the era that these stories come out of, it's not that hard to believe that people really believed in this stuff because this is all they had. You know, some of them were, may have been a bit more modern or outspoken for their day and age. But if you look at it, this is why a majority of the population would tell and spread these stories because they had no other explanation. I mean, obviously, flat, fast forward years in advance and we've got we've got modern medical science. You know, we've got ways to prove things are real and are not real and whatnot. And, you know... I want to believe that for the most part, we're a lot smarter than we were a hundred years ago. Well, for the most part, but it's like this, this show provided this incredible perspective as to how, and more importantly, why these stories came about, because it was like the only way people had to explain this shit. And that was just really remarkable to me. I just thought that was a very, very fascinating aspect to the show. But to the show itself, incredibly entertaining. I absolutely loved the first episode, the story of uh, taking, like, for example, trying to explain tuberculosis with vampires. I absolutely loved that story. I mean, yes, it's a tragedy, of course. And I feel sorry for the man who lost his entire family to Tuberculo tuberculosis, which is very sad. But I loved what I mean by that is that I, I loved the way the story was told. They gave us all of the facts of the actual case, and then they explained the uh, the glamorized uh, blitz that surrounded it after the story came out. And I think that's what happened in every single case, because we saw that with the Reverend trying to communicate with his dead wife through spiritualism, through the seance. We saw that when the villagers killed the man who was a serial killer and pretending he was a werewolf and whatnot. And then uh, the final episode, which might have been like the best episode of a case of the super scary creepy doll. Ooh, yeah, that thing was scary, man. Whew, scary. And it still sits on display today at this very day and age. That, that right there is just ooh, shuddering to me. And uh, this was just a great. Uh, this was just a great show for the most part. This was a. This was a good, scary anthology series. And there's a lot of good and not so good horror anthology series out there. But I think this one might be one of my new favorites, just in the way it was told, with a new story, a new cast of characters in every single episode, and how it was like a combination of a fictional TV show combined with a documentary with the host of the podcast Aaron Menken I think I'm saying his name right I hope I am but the ho the guy who's the host of the original podcast doing voiceover and narrating for every single episode and then when he's done voice voicing over it it goes back to the story at hand it was just it was just incredibly well done and I really, really enjoyed it. And um, I'm a little unclear as to whether or not this was a short limited series or if this is the first season and they're waiting to get a second season renewal or pickup. We have yet to wait and hear or see that yet. But hopefully they do because I personally loved it absolutely fell in love with this show uh, after finishing this first season. I'll probably rewatch a couple of my favorite episodes, like the the vampire one, the werewolf one, the creepy doll one, and then the haunted house one. You know, that was, the, those are all just incredible stories, incredible true stories with such, just the right amount of uh, spookiness and unknown to them. Uh, so I hope we get a second season. I, you know, I, uh, I really enjoyed it and I hope you guys did too. So uh, overall, what did you guys think of uh, 
uh, Lore Season 1. Did you like it? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Did you have any personal favorite moments or scenes or stories? What do you hope to see in the second season if we get a second season? Please leave your thoughts, opinions, and your feedback down below in the comments section. I'd love to hear from you guys. You've been doing a phenomenal job with that lately. Don't forget to subscribe to The Edward for more review videos like this one. And check back later tomorrow for my Season uh, 3 finale of, the, of Fear the Walking Dead. Uh, which will be doing its season three finale tomorrow night on AMC. I'll be doing a review video for that as well. All right, guys, have a great rest of the day if I don't see you again. And of course, until next time, may the force be with you.